Okay, mo morning everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is our, uh, we've been talking about this for a long yeah, time in the UK, um, around like some mould and um, really what we're going to, we have some experts in the room actually with us uh, uh, this morning uh, to talk about the Dutch approach to, to mould. So um, what I'll do is I'll get our, like, our experts to introduce themselves. Uh, so just take about half a minute or so. Can, can we start with you, Mike? Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Here's Holland. It still uh, sounds like the Euro Song Fest Festival, but uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Mike Frankhausen. I'm the MD of uh, Inducode. Um, Inducode is a coatings manufacturer with an exclusive focus on antimicrobial coatings. So that's especially anti-mold coatings for landlords, for example. Um, what makes us unique? Our anti-mold coatings comply to the strictest legal norms, but they also lead the technical standards and are focusing on ecologically. Um, the use, well, many Dutch landlords, uh, social housing, for instance, um, have major problems with mold. 38%, uh, imagine this, 38% of Dutch houses have serious mold issues. Um, and these are not just old houses, but also new builds. And this is due to ventilation problems, especially today with the energy pricing, um, building problems, for instance, moist, but also the behavior of the tenants is difficult. And, you know, when it's too difficult or too expensive to correct this, it's about money in Holland, uh, our anti-mold paint is selected and that saves cost and lowers complaints. And my thought for today is what works for Dutch landlords can be beneficial for the British. So at the end of the day, saving costs, lower complaints is a universal thing. And I hope this helps um, to share this information. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, well, well, we've been to Holland um, and now we're off to Ireland. So uh, Jack, do you want to just say a few words about you and, 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 and the job you're doing in Ireland? Certainly. Uh, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Jack McGuinness. Um, my company is Brinia Coatings, and we represent Indicoat in Ireland. Uh, the main business area that we're involved in at the moment is anti-mold with a couple of county councils. Uh, we've been dealing with them now for a number of years, and the feedback we're getting is that uh, the efficacy of Indicoat products, um, we're seeing lifespans of three to five years, whereas before that, they were probably six months before somebody had to go in and repaint. Uh, the one thing that we have uh, found and, and indicated to our users is that the preparation is a major, major part of getting the uh, proper lifespan out of these coatings. So unlike in the past, where people would have dealt with just a black spot of mold in a corner, uh, we insist that the entire room is sprayed with Indico cleaner, left for eight hours, um, cleaned off, and then the coating is applied. Uh, the reason for that is that coming out of the black mold is transparent filaments in which the spores live and multiply. They're then airborne and uh, one can't see them. And that's where the health hazard comes in. So that's been our experience. Um, thanks, Grant. All right. Thanks, Jack. Uh, I was going to go to today, but she seems to have left the building. So for, for, so, so for those of you who've joined us, um, if you look at the chat box, you'll see that we'll put up from time to time information that, that will tell you a little bit like some more about the Dutch approach to, to, to um, handling mould. And um, as I say, you can, that's a free download for you. If you can also add your contact details in there, we'll be putting our contact details in there if you want to reach out, from, if you want to, reach out to us um, and we'll be happy to speak to you. And now we're back. And so to prove a truly international band of, Banty, we're now off to Scotland. Um, and to Jeanette, Jeanette, do you just want to briefly introduce yourself? Morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeanette Hamill. My company is Hamill Decorating Services. Um, we're based in Edinburgh and we work in sort of Edinburgh, the Lothians, across the Central Belt and Fife. And um, we've been working with Intuco for, the, for a year now with um, actually quite a lot of success um, helping letting agencies. Um, kill mould in the bathrooms, kitchens, and a couple of bedrooms. And what we've done is we've actually managed to um, go back and check up on these after several months. And um, it's the, the product's still working, so we're quite excited. 
<laughs> and I'm out of breath because I've had to run up and down. <laughs> to get the dogs out of the way because they're going mental. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to come to you, Jeanette. I thought we'd upset you because you disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 well, let's go back there. Now let's because actually I think the first thing we need to understand is is and, and some of you on here will all, already know this about about understanding understanding the mold problem. So so I mean how it. How, how does it happen? Can I hand that? To, can I hand that over to you, Mike? Being the being the technical expert in terms of of kind of mold and sure. how it comes to be and yeah. how the problem can manifest itself. Yeah, uh, so, so thank you. Certainly, um, when we look at mold, uh, imagine mold is an all they, they hold their own empire, its own species, and every day we're learning more about the effects of mold, the way they grow, uh, but also, you know, what they do to our health, for instance, because one of the unique items for mold is that they uh, transport themselves via the air. So the spores, when you have a mold problem, the spores are everywhere. And as Jack just said, the actual end stage of a mold is when, so to speak, the flower is blooming, that's the black bit. But Meanwhile, the whole surface is contaminated with mold. And also one of their specialities, if you will, is that they like to combine. So often it's not just one type of mold, but there's a combination. So the moment you talk about mold remediation, you have to really be very, very th thorough. Uh, on the other hand, the re reality is when you are a landlord, you want to be cost effective, make it simple. Um, so there's the balance. So uh, our approach is that um, when we look at mold remediation, first off, you have, uh, as Jack said, the cleaner, so to kill, to kill the mold, uh, if you will, and, and remove the spores. But the real value of our proposition is, like Jeanette said, in, 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 in the long-term protection of the dry film. And what do I mean with that? So you paint, there's paint on the wall, any type of mold comes up and it's eliminated by, um, uh, by uh, uh, technology which is uh, tried and tested against a range of uh, uh, mold and their, and their spores. Um, is it okay so, if I just go, is it okay if I just yeah, go please back? Please go, yes, no, okay. yes. No, because you said the, the first time you'll actually know about the mold is when you see it. I mean, yes. potentially, how long has the mold been in the area until it actually until it actually shows itself? It, could, could it be weeks or months or or, or what? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you in in our ecosystem, mold is already there. It's everywhere. So and it's good. It's not. It's not not per se bad. Uh, the moment the the level of moist, for instance, or the, the the food for the for the mold is too big, then they start to fester, and then you talk about the contamination. So uh, the visual indication is leading. Why? Because then you know that there's, for instance, a moist problem or a, a cold bridge in a building or, or you know, any typical um, a problem which, which indeed causes, for instance, the mold to, to grow in a, a such a way that you actually see it. Because when you see it, that's an indication, oh, this is not good. Um, and that is, um, that can be very fast. Um, typically, the range of, of manifestation from, from just being there to being contamination is, is weeks to, to maximum 12 weeks. So a one week to 12 weeks, then you will certainly see the growth of, 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 of mold. Okay, thanks for that. Um, there's a question leapt into my mind that leapt out almost immediately, which is not, 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 <laughs> which is not great. Um, so in terms of, so you said about, uh, so you said about the likes of manifestation. So, so one of the things I've been, I've been, I've been, let's say, watching on the news in the UK is very much around, um, is of, of course, the heating crisis and, and, and the cost of, let's utility bills. And, and people are being told to turn off heating in some rooms in order to save, 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 let's say, cash. But would that actually help the mould to, to, to like say manifest itself, you know, because the, I mean the very fact that you've turned the heating off in, in like say one room, and you keep it on in another room, is it not contrary to the advice that we'd be giving them, which is you need to keep the room aired and heated? 
Um, yeah, you, the tipping point for mold is typically when you look at relatively humidity and absolute humidity, AE moist in the air to actually moist, which you see on the walls, is yeah. around 13 degrees Celsius. So one, three. And 13 degrees Celsius, uh, you can imagine that when you don't ventilate, you are already in in that in that area and this is what you see and is it is it is uh, interesting because what you see is that the key is still ventilation 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 because um, you can heat it up or you can you can lower your heating uh, but at the end of the day if there's no ventilation you will in any case see uh, especially in this uh, time of year uh, moist uh, on for instance your windows and that indicates um, that there is a high relative humidity and that will benefit uh, the growth of uh, harmful mold uh, in any case. Um, so what we see in the Netherlands, like in, 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 in the United Kingdom, is especially in social housing, where ventilation as a fact is already a problem and where the behavior of the tenants is in fact already a problem. <laughs> This is emphasized by people, for instance, using all kinds of insulation materials, which, you know, they they limit the ventilation such that the tipping point 13 degrees uh, is, is, is easily there and the mold uh, growth is, you know, just exploding. I hope this makes sense. Uh, I apologize for my uh, for my uh, English people. I'm just trying this morning. <laughs> it's, it's probably better than mine, Mike, so I wouldn't worry about it. Um, so so, so in terms of the Dutch approach then, because obviously you've got a different approach to it, how can you just talk us through how that how that kind of works and really what the what the actual process is? Yeah, um, you know, okay. So let us imagine uh, that I'm a, a a landlord, and I, for instance, in Holland we have social housing. And these landlords, um, they have approximately 50,000 houses. So it's a big uh, responsibility. Um, and you can imagine that um, the mold issues are, are pre pretty serious. Um, so there are two interests. One is cost. Two is cost. Three is cost. And then four, the complaints by the tenants. So that is typically a Dutch situation. So what happens is you get a call and you get many calls when you have uh, lots of these houses of people saying, hey, I have a mold problem. So what you, do you do? Do you change the building structure? No. Do you tell these people to change behavior? Very difficult. So you want to select the proper system because before going into our system, it's important to offer this audience clear and objective selection criteria, because why would we choose, let's say, the Inducode system? I think there are many, many coatings uh, out there. And when you go online and you put in on Google anti-mold, you will get tons of solutions. So why do these Dutch land landlords now today choose Inducode? And it's a very, very simple thing. Everybody wants to sell them stuff. Because the problem is big, the market is big, but they want to have certainty because at the end of the day, they want to limit the stream of complaints and limit the cost. So what do we do in Holland? We look at the tin. Any technical person will just pick up a tin and look at the claim, but also at the number in the Netherlands. The government provides us with an authorization number and that authorization number proves that this product is in the, indeed safe, it works, and it has been tried and tested. So to make matter very simple for today, it's not about very difficult technical processes for these people because they are too busy. They are not you know, uh, waiting for me to hold a technical talk about what's in the coating. They're not interested. They want to see, does it work? Does it save money? And does it reduce complaints? And that particular authorization number gives them the certainty. And then it's up to professional applicators like Hamel decorators who understand this and also keep matters simple because the team of, of Hamels, for instance, would go in, like Jack said, first use a very friendly mold remediation, temporary killer. Eh? So you have to, to, to kill the basics. And then you start simply by painting step one, step two, and that's it. And you move on to the next. And believe you me, in the Netherlands, uh, with 1.2 social housing with serious mold, 
problem. Um, the next is, 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 you know, the days are filled. The, the one thing I, I liked about it when I talked to you about this is, is that you say the paint gives you data as well, doesn't it? You, you can get data from the performance of the paint. Yes, well, yeah, there are all kinds of um, uh, data. Before getting this authorization number, uh, paint manufacturers have to do full disclosure, full data disclosure on their formula. Because like what uh, Jeanette said, in the old days, there would be just uh, additives. Eh? You would go into a paint wholesaler, say, hey, I like this paint. Do you have some stuff? Then they would mix it in. And uh, there you have it, mess with the mix. Uh, for an extra gilders in the old days, uh, uh, you would have your, uh, your, 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 your product. With a formulated product, that authorization number is not just a, a, a number. There's data um, compiled by the Dutch government on performance, safety, and environmental effect. Without that, you will not be allowed to on, on the market. So that is that is the theoretical bit, but the practical bit I feel is more important. Um, so we are in the Netherlands uh, providing all these social housing uh, companies with our coatings over many years now. We are at least 15 years in the making and um, uh, seeing is believing for those guys because they've heard all the magic talk and um, we have a reference base which is unparalleled. And um, and funny a funny bit is that now these guys have to talk English as well because they're often uh, approached by people from far and away to say, hey, does this really work for you? And yes, so we have references uh, providing practice-based evidence. And what does this mean? We uh, any competitor we outperform by a factor five. So if you have a really, really difficult situation where let's say after six months, typically the mold comes uh, comes back and, and any system will, will maybe last for a couple of months, maybe up to a year, we will go to five years. I mean, that's data which, uh, which you know, save, really save costs. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that was, the, I, think, I, th I think the thing, especially in UK at the moment is, I think everybody wants wants to wants the data and wants to see how the data, you know, how, how the paint paint actually performs, how the coating performs, um, and so that's interesting. But 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 can I come to you, Jack? Is that all right in yeah, terms of yeah. in terms of obviously you've been you've been obviously like so working within the coat yes. and and the Dutch approach show for a long time. How's that gone down in Ireland? How have you how have you how have you developed that in Ireland? And and can you watch the benefits that, that organizations in Ireland have seen from it as a result? Yeah, interesting. About three or four years ago, um, Mike visited Dublin and we met with um the chief engineer of Dublin City Council. And we had a very good hour discussion and presentation from Mike. Um he was very interested in the product and about a week later uh, I was following up on it. And uh, he indicated that he was more than willing to have a look at our product. Why? Because of the technical information that he was given. And as an engineer, he was more than interested in uh, what, how it works and why it works. And he was particularly interested in the concept of leaching and non-leaching. What I mean by that is up to fairly recently, um, most additives that would have been applied to paint in order to kill mold were leachable products. That means as soon as the paint is applied, the additive that's in there to kill the mold starts leaching out from the, the, the uh, surface of the paint system. That has two problems. <clears throat> One, it means that the additive is now in the environment in which people are living. And two, it reduces dramatically the life expectancy of the uh, coating itself. So what Indicode have done is they've created a, a scenario whereby the additive that's put in there and the technology around the additive that's in there means that the product only starts to, to work if and when a, a mold spore tries to attach itself to the surface of the, of the paint. So what are the advantages? We go back to what I was saying a minute ago. The advantages are that the life expectancy and the efficacy of the paint is dramatically improved. The environment in which the paint is, has been applied is dramatically improved, whereby nobody is actually inhaling uh, the additive that's been, that has been leaching out from the paint. So they're, they're the two, they're the selling points that we got across to Dublin City Council. And they were the reasons, and they are the reasons <clears throat> why we still produce and supply paint to them. 
I haven't had one complaint in the four years that we've been supplying to Dublin City Council uh, along the lines of your product doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> there's mold coming back after six months, which is the problem they had prior to using Indico products. Now, another interesting scenario is some people would, would decide that they would insulate the particular room in which the mold was, was showing itself. Now, by insulating and not treating the mold before you insulate means that the mold is still there. So what we advocate with people who are talking about insulating rather than using our products is that we still recommend that you use our products initially. And then if you want to insulate, please go ahead and do that. But you need to kill off what's there initially. So that's been our experience over the last three to five years. OK, thanks, Jack. So we'll go to professionals now. Uh, the, the, the painters, we'll go to, we'll go to um, um, uh, my friend Jeanette. You guys have actually been been like so working with the paint in the UK. So, so give give us the experience they've had of of like so working with Indico and and the change of because it's a slightly different process, isn't it? It's a slightly different process. So in terms of quoting. It, rather than going into a room and saying, oh, this is going to take two days to paint, what we do is we swab the walls to see, you know, what the issue is, whether it's mould, whether it's bacteria. Most of the time it's it's mould because it's mainly bathrooms and things like that that we're going into. Um, and then once we've identified what the problem is, then we can identify which product um, um, to use. And, and um, I think 99% of the time it's been the uh, anti-mould paint. So the process, going back to what Mike, Mike said about the um, cleaning it and killing it, first of all, um, you, there, there is a cleaner that we use and we do that on day one. And um, I even use, I actually use the cleaner in my house as well because it doesn't smell like bleach. It doesn't, it's not toxic at all. So um, it's, you know, the first time I sprayed it, I was expecting to have all those fumes doesn't have that at all. One of our remits as a decorator is that we use eco-friendly products and we're really happy to use this because the VOCs are really, really low. So the cleaning process is really simple. You go in, you spray the, um, the anti-mold um, killer onto the walls. And then the next day, the painter goes back, cleans it off and applies the paint. And it's really that simple. So um, it's a two coat system. It covers incredibly well. The painters really like it. My painters don't like anything and they really <laughs> like this product. Um, when they said, when I actually had one of them phone me up and he's the biggest complainer out of all of them. He phoned me up and he said, Jeanette, see that Indicoat stuff? That's really good. And I just went, who are you? And what have you done with that? <laughs> yeah. so, so that for me, just, it, it was just brilliant. And that was the endorsement I needed because they always turn the nose up at everything that knew that I try and introduce. So the letting agents, uh, we're working with three um, letting agencies at the moment, and um, we had particular success with one. We had one, it was a student let, and um, they had an internal cupboard, what we would call an Edinburgh Press. And in that cupboard, they had the washing machine and the tumble dryer, and there was no ventilation for the tumble dryer, so the wee pipe was just coming out the back of the tumble dryer into the cupboard. This cupboard was black, absolutely black. We painted that cupboard with the Indico. We cleaned it all, um, painted it. And then in, um, that was in February, I think it was Feb end of February, beginning of March. Um, we had to go back um, for another room um, a few weeks back. And I said to Kev, can you go and check that cupboard? And he, and he came back and he said, spotless, absolutely spotless. Now, none of the other paints on the on the market would have held that back. It was just, it was horrendous. And it's still being used as a, as, as a, a wee utility room as well. So the conditions in there are a bit of a nightmare. So we've had, we've had a lot of success with this and we're getting a lot of interest with it as well. Um, especially, um, you know, sort of recently with mold being in the news, um, there, there is a lot more interest and people are looking for affordable, simple solutions. And I actually think that this product is possibly one of the more affordable, one of the more simple solutions to, to fixing the, the mould issue. Okay, thanks for that, Lisa Jeanette. Um, Camille, for those of you on the seminar, if you like, if you have any, any, any questions or any points you'd like to make, please add them in the chat. We'll quite happily answer them. Um, so, you Sorry, Grant, just, uh, just one comment there before we move on. Yeah, sure, absolutely. 
Um, certainly, apart from the, the main product that's on the line is the um, Indicote fungi, which is used for bathrooms and kitchens and anywhere else you've got a mold problem. But on the, the list of products, we also have products that can be applied to wood or steel or whatever. Um, obviously, they're different products based on different technology. But just so to make sure everybody fully understands that we have a product, an anti-mold product for any surface in which you find uh, mold to be an issue. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jack. Um, like, so one of the things I was going to say there, one of the things from from talking to to like the letting agents, one of the challenges they have is, 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 is I mean, that they say is who's responsible for the mold? Is it is it the building that's failed, or, or as you said earlier, Mike, is it the behaviours of of the, the people actually living in it? And and so 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 does the this. Does the Dutch approach take away that, as Jeffrey Boycott would say, um, that that avenue of uncertainty, where actually we know that the paint likes the works, we know the coating works, and so it's there for down to the behaviours of of the tenant. Yeah. Um, uh, first, first point. It's a line of defence. So when you are owning a building and you want to have tenants in, uh, you want to show that you've done your utmost. So um, using uh, an, an authorized anti-mold system shows proof of the fact that you care. That's, that's one. Second, and I make it very practical again, um, you just want to steer away from any complaints. So what we often see is, and this is what we call um, uh, in social housing, for instance, uh, mutation housing. So uh, one tenant leaves and the other comes in and there are a couple of days between. Yeah. And as a building owner, you want to just spruce it up a little bit. And often they use anti-mold coatings just to prevent complaints. Because if you're painting anyway, do it smart. Why would you choose the cheap and cheerful two layers where you know that that will open up a door to any complaints and discussions is just also a very costly process. So what you do is you are just smart. So when we look at changing houses, if you will, they always use uh, our, uh, our system. Um, and with regards to responsibility, it's always a gr gray area. Um, what people also do as, as, as tenants, or excuse me, as, as landlords, um, if they feel it's not their responsibility, they do advice, so they have information leaflets, and uh, they they often um, uh, point at what we would call specialized applicators, uh, 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 really professional decorators who know their stuff, who go in and solve it. So there's also a communication uh, bit, maybe the most important even. So there are leaflets out there explaining what we've been talking about this this morning that you know you can go for the cheap and cheerful at B&Q but that is just a short term solution go for a long term uh, solution and maybe last and uh, I'll wrap it up uh, rest assured but maybe last but not certainly not least you know whether you're a landlord or a tenant or a painter or paint manufacturer the goal is ethical to give people really truly a healthy indoor environment. I mean, what we've learned over the over the over the last period is that mold is truly harmful. So yes, I've been stretching the stressing the fact that we are talking about cost because uh, you you have your budget. We realize this, but at the end of the day, it's also about protecting the vulnerable. And especially when we talk about let's say social housing. In the Netherlands, uh, people come in, uh, sometimes refugees, for instance, it's taking also social responsibility, not just giving the cheap and cheerful, but indeed doing the best for these people, because it is, as a matter of fact, very detrimental for your health to have mold in your house. It's bad for your respiratory system. We learn each day that the toxic effects of household molds are really um, uh, creating havoc. So let's not only discuss who is the, the, the responsibility, just help each other. This is also a Christmas, Christmas thought, don't you think? Yes. Absolutely, thanks. Well, we just had a, we've got a question here from, from Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. She's asking, 
um, 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 you know, where she, she can buy these types of products. Um, come and talk to us. Um, my, um, all my contact details are in the, in the chat. It's Rebecca, if you want to have a chat, we'll have a chat about how we can help you. And I can either plug you in with like some Mike or Jack or Jeanette, depending on where you are in the country uh, or in some cases in the world in this case. Um, and, and we can certainly have a, have a chat about that. Um, in terms of of, of our approach, you would you would you you come and talk to us, and, and we'll be able to help you and 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 understand understand what you need. Grant, can I just make a comment? Yeah, of course, can Jack. Um, certainly, from from our perspective over here, what we have found in trying to sell the idea of antimicrobial coatings in Ireland is that uh, on occasions when required for crashes, care homes, etc., we have provided a certificate um, after we've done the job. Whereby it it says that from a from the creche owner or the, the care home owner, uh, he puts a notice up in the front of the building, basically saying that he takes very seriously the health and well being of his clients, uh, and as a result of that, he has used Indico products uh, which are certified, uh, and that gives peace of mind to particularly in care homes of people whose elderly relatives are being sent in there for most cases the rest of our the rest of their lives. To show that the uh, organisation takes very seriously the health and welfare of their clients, so that's, that's that, is, that, has be, that has become a, a selling point from our point of view, yeah. and from um, the and from the NGO's point of view. Absolutely, and I think I think one of the things that that we're actually working through is like specialised applicators. Yes. So effectively, uh, the, this will also answer your let's a question. Let's like Rebecca, as I see here in East Lothian, uh, kind of Hamels happen to be. Uh, uh, Hamels happen to also be East Lothian, but they're also a specialist applicator. So they're able to purchase the paint directly. We only work with trusted painters and like suppliers. And we've been talking to, to, to painters up and down the UK um, in terms of um, they have to take their stuff, they, they have to be approved uh, and have to go through an approval process. And, um, so, and then at the end of it, they can like to certificate um, and the work they've done, which should give you some confidence that it's been done um, kind of professionally and like, properly. Um, okay, if, any more questions? If there's no more, if, as I say, if you want to add your questions into the into the chat, we'll happily answer them. Um, so, me, Mike, I, I mean, I want to take you back in history, some some, if you don't mind, <laughs> in terms of in terms of. Um, where did the idea for this approach come from? I, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously we're talking about the Dutch approach, but but what was the what, what was the eureka like the moment that? Um, <laughs> thought, well, that's a good question. Um, um, where do I start? Um, I think that one of the starting points of innovation is um, that you are irritated. So at one point, uh, uh, people were just irritated by all the marketing nonsense with regards to bathroom coatings, anti-mold coatings and stuff like that. I think that is a starting point. And uh, for Injucoat itself, we are a family-owned business. So uh, Ron Frankhausen, uh, my father, used to be uh, working worldwide for a, a huge uh, coatings manufacturer. He was the, I would say, coatings professor. He was like the guy who uh, developed all the formulas. And he was irritated as well because what he saw was that the actual co big coating manufacturers were just focusing on vol volume play, selling as much paint as they can. Whereas the value of paint can be so more than just being a paint. It's when you add value, for instance, in the sense of hygiene or antimicrobial, uh, that's an, an interesting point. So on the one hand, you saw that the awareness of the need for, for improvement with regards to antimicrobial coatings, AE hygiene coatings was there. And on the other hand, uh, we saw that there was so much more possible. So many years ago, um, uh, uh, that became our focal point because we love to add value oh, to, nice. let's say, relatively simple oh. products. Um, so, um, and that was in 1998. So that's a pretty, a pretty long time ago. And um, what, I, what, what I loved was that the big firms first started to fight us. So you talk about Axel Nobel and PPG, the likes of that. And today in the Netherlands, for instance, Axel Nobel is, is uh, uh, selling us and uh, PPG 
is selling us. So they acknowledge the fact that there's specialist power because, you know, it's somewhat, somewhat of a handicap being in this business because I see mold everywhere. I see bacteria everywhere. I mean, you start to, you, you, you get itchy everywhere. Um, but uh, so it's really a focal point. And, and to be fair, the mold deserve a focal point because they are so interesting. There are so much going on. Uh, I see Mr. Tom Fillery uh, attending this meeting as well. For instance, in the equine business, um, we learn so much of the effects of, 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 of these microorganisms. Um, so moving to today, we are a company with that focus, but also uh, continuously looking at the standards and also talking to governments about how do we improve these standards? Because we feel that the strictest of approach is needed because it, we have to have an antidote against the marketing nonsense. I think that is one of the, the, the major points uh, for, for us. Um, because when you go to B&Q and you say, I have mold in my bathroom, they will sell you a ton of stuff. And this is why I believe in Hamel, uh, uh, the company of Jeanette, to understand the technical, uh, well, to understand what, what 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 is true and what is not true. I hope this helps, Grant. No, no, that's that's absolutely fantastic. And I think we're coming coming to the end of that. I mean, I think I think one of the things that that, that we've discovered over the last few weeks is the amount of people who have a mold issue and are, are now starting to recognise that they have a mold issue. And so almost every conversation I have these days is either with a painter who's who's keen to get on board, who wants to particularly change the business kind of model in terms of you don't want to wait 60, 90 days to get paid. You know, you can work on projects and get paid on on like say 30 days. Um to, to like the letting agents, to 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 local councils, you know, we're we're now talking to a number of local councils around around the problem, especially in council voids. Uh, in terms of, as as you said earlier, Alexa Mike, about the the changing tenants and how they give it a quick give it a quick flick with a paintbrush, which won't really last, will, will, won't really help help like some matters. And so, if you've if you've any interest at all and you want to have a chat to us, please get in touch. You can get in touch with us either through the Construction Lakes Network or our LinkedIn page or our Facebook page. Um, and if you have any questions, please contact us through direct likes and message on, on LinkedIn or Facebook if we can't answer them. We have a brains trust around us, so I'm sure we can get an answer for you. Um, I would, um, I'd like to thank you all for coming along. Thanks for your time um, and thanks for your expertise. And um, this video will also be available on, on YouTube probably in, um, in the next couple of days. And you can spend... The break in between in between uh, um, um, you know, Christmas and, um, and like say New Year when you've had enough of the family and you've eaten <laughs> too many mince pies, having another look at it. Um, can we take this opportunity to wish you all a happy Christmas and uh, have a have a prosperous like say, New Year? And we'll see you all in 2023. So thanks, thanks a lot, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Just hold on.